So I've been getting different requests over the last uh, few weeks, but uh, actually one of the people who doesn't uh, listen to my YouTube channel brought this up, and I think I want to share it. He said, why don't you talk about the Peter Pan incident involving the Chicago Cougars? And I said, the Peter Pan incident, and it didn't ring a bell until uh, I revived my memory of the incident. Uh, we're going to get this into this very soon, but I want to give you some backstory on the team that was, again, allegedly lost to Peter Pan. We'll get into it in a few seconds. The Chicago Cougars. Now, the Chicago Cougars uh, played in the WHA from 72 to 75, and they were uh, a marquee uh, original franchise that probably one of the most distinct logos of the 1970s. Beautiful with the Cougar logo and kind of the, the, Ray, the, the Ray's double C. Now, they played their home games in the International Happy Theater, and this will tie in the, to Peter Pan pretty soon. Now, uh, during the 74 AFCO Cup Finals against Gordy Howe and the Houston Oeros, the team's two home games were played at the Randers Twin Ice Arena in suburban Mount Prospect. This was because a presentation of Peter Pan starring gymnast Kathy Ripley Rigby was booked into the amphitheater when the NHL Chicago Blackhawks and the NBA Chicago Bulls had both entered their own playoffs, making the Chicago Stadium unavailable for either Cougars or Peter Pan. Now, just prior to the third season, the team was sold to Cougars players Ralph Backstrom and Dave Dryden, both former NHLers, and player coach Pat Staple and after original owners, Walter and Jordan Kaiser were unable to secure funds to build a new arena. The Landford Arena, originally named the O'Hare Sports Arena, was sold to the village of Rosemount and became the Rosemount Horizon, now the Allstate Arena. The building is currently the home of the Chicago Wolves of the AHL. Now, the Cougars were placed in the Western Division for the first season in 73 and transferred to the Eastern Division for the final two seasons when the Blazers moved to Vancouver. Uh, the Cougars were the first North American professional franchise to feature player numbers on the front of their jersey in the up, upper right corner, which is very common now. Now, the next professional team to try it was the Buffalo Sabres in 2006. Now, the only current NHL team to feature front numbers are the San Jose Sharks, who use it from 07 to 2015. But it's very commonplace in many, uh, uh, in many teams now, and quite, uh, quite nice, actually. Now, the Cougars finished last in, their, in the Western Division during the 73 season with 54 points. Their team defense finished 8 overall with 295 95 goals against and dead last in team offense with 245 goals. Uh, the one bright spot for Chicago was Bob Sosinski, who finished 5th in the league with 63 assists. Now, the Cougars finished 4th in Eastern Division in the 74th season with 81 points. There were 7 overall in goals for uh, 4 with 271 and 6 overall in goals against with 273. Pat Stapleton finished 9th in the league with 52 assists and Backstrom followed in 10th with uh, 50. Now, uh, the rugged Larry Mavetti finished 10th in the league with 157 penalty minutes. The Cougars would make their only post-series in appearance that year. In the Eastern Division semifinals, they upset, upset the defending champion New England Whalers for games to three. In the divisional final, they de defeated the Toronto Toros for going games to three, with the Cougars winning the decisive seven game on Toronto Ice by a 5-2 count. Now, unfortunately, Chicago would be outmatched in the AFCO final against the Arrows, because, of course, the, the Arrows featured many stars, including Gordy Howe and his sons, Mark and Mar Marty. They would uh, sweep the Cougars in four games, 22-9. Now, the Cougars finished third in the Eastern Division and 12th overall in 75 with 61 points. They were 10th overall in goals with 261 and 12th in goals against with 261. Uh, Larry Mavity finished 10th in the league again with 150 penalty minutes, but was traded to the Toros after playing 57 games for Chicago. Following the campaign, the Cougars folded after player owners were unable to attract more financing. With the death of the Cougars, the WHA had departed all of the three biggest markets in the States as the New York Golden Blades shifted to South Jersey early in 74, while the LA Sharks moved to Detroit in 1974. Now, in the dispersal draft that followed, most of the players ended up with the expansion Denver Spurs, and the Spurs are considered by some as a continuation of the Cougars. The last active Cougars player in any uh, North American major professional hockey market was Kurt Brackenberry, who played four games with the Cougars in 74 
and retired from the NHL after uh, the 83 season. As well, Cougars draft pick Reggie Lamelin played in the NHL until 93, but never played in the WHA. Now, the Peter Pan incident, just bear with me, because this could take a separate podcast, but it comes down to this. The Cougars, when they made the playoffs in 74, the their first series, in a series against New England passed without incident on home ice. But the next two series would be difficult in more ways than one. Now, the International Amphitheater was unavailable for the second round because I had booked a production of Peter Pan featuring Olympic gymnast Kathy Rigby in a title role. Though the squad did negotiate for use of Chicago Stadium, the home of the rival Chicago Blackhawks and the NBA Chicago Bulls, it too was unavailable because both their teams were playing in their own playoffs. The team briefly considered playing the matches at the Cleveland Arena, uh, deciding to go stay in Illinois at a public skating rink, the Randhurst Twin Ice Arena, adjacent to Mount Prospect's Randhurst Mall. The only arena could only hold 2,000 spectators. The squad played some three home matches of the series in Randhurst. Now, when the Cougars won their series versus Toronto, the Peter Pan show had moved on, but the organizers of the rink, the amphitheater, never told them they were going to do this. It should have been available. However, the amphitheater had a portable ice service. Now, for reasons that were never stated, the amphitheater staff decided the hockey season for them was over and uncovered and dismantled the copper pipes used to chill the ice. The Cougars had no choice but to return to Randhurst for the finals to face the Arrows in their big offense. The Cougars never quite recovered from the public relations disaster. As one high-level sports reporter had quipped, the Cougars were beaten by the greatest lightweight of them all, Peter Pan. So, season by season records overall, three seasons total, 94 wins, 132 losses, 8 ties, uh, 777 goals for, 880 goals against. But that it wasn't their fault uh, that uh, Peter Pan was playing and that Chicago's both uh, major pro teams did well. If anything, the WJ should have stepped in and gave them maybe an option to play in Quebec an option maybe to borrow a rink in Hamilton, but there was uh, some discussion if uh, Ralph Baxter and Pat Stapleton and the other player owners had overstayed their welcome in relation to uh, certain contests because the WHA, not only being a rough league, it had a lot of league of long memory, and I know this for a fact. There were some Chicago Cougars players were not well liked by the, uh, the opposing uh, skaters. So, anyway... That's the story of Chicago Cougars. Now, if you have a chance to go on YouTube, check out some of the old Cougars highlights. Again, the jerseys were just tremendous. It had a tinge of like a golden Cougar. It was golden green, but it was more, I don't know. Uh, I, I gladly, if any team would have had a, want to start a, a hockey Cougars name, that's the jersey to do it because the Cougars logo itself can be augmented. But it was pretty cool. Uh, I like to know who was the graphic artist for the logo. I like to shake his hand. Did a really good job, and it stands out. The hockey cards of the Cougar logo, it just fits. Because if you look closely at the logo, it looks like a hockey rig from above, too, as well. So, although, why is the Cougar walking on his own tail? But that's another story altogether. Have a good day.